We're delving into the rich history of American presidents, from George Washington to Joe Biden. In this video, we'll explore each president in detail, from their beginnings to the legacy they left behind. Join us on this thrilling journey through history and discover what each of them contributed to American politics and society. George Washington Born on February 22, 1732, in Westmoreland County, Virginia, British America. He assumed office on April 30, 1789. A significant event during his presidency was leading the American forces in the American Revolutionary War, 1775-1783, and serving as the first president of the United States, which included establishing the foundations for a new Republican government and defining the role of the president. He served as president until March 4, 1797, and died on December 14, 1799. John Adams Born on October 30, 1735, in Braintree, Massachusetts, British America. He took office on March 4, 1797. A significant event during his presidency was the Quasi-War with France. This conflict arose from tensions between the United States and France during the French Revolutionary and Napoleonic eras. The Quasi-War was not formally declared as a war, but the US and France engaged in military conflicts in the Atlantic Ocean and Caribbean. The Adams administration responded to threats of French privateer attacks on American merchant ships by enacting the Naval Act, which led to the strengthening of the U.S. Navy in defense of American interests abroad. This conflict ended in 1800 with the signing of the Convention of 1800, also known as the Treaty of Mortefontaine, which resolved tensions between the two countries. John Adams served as president until March 4, 1801, and died on July 4, 1826. Thomas Jefferson Born on April 13, 1743, in Shadwell, Virginia, British America. He assumed office on March 4, 1801. A significant event during his presidency was the Louisiana Purchase in 1803. This acquisition doubled the size of the United States and opened up vast territories for westward expansion. Additionally, Jefferson is known for his authorship of the Declaration of Independence and his promotion of the ideals of individual liberty and democracy. He served as president until March 4, 1809, and died on July 4, 1826. James Madison Born on March 16, 1751, in Port Conway, Virginia, British America. He took office on March 4, 1809. A significant event during his presidency was the War of 1812, which was fought between the United States and the United Kingdom. This conflict arose from various factors, including trade restrictions imposed by Britain, impressment of American sailors into the British Navy, and American territorial expansionism. The War of 1812 saw significant battles such as the Battle of New Orleans and the burning of Washington, D.C. Although it ended in a stalemate, the war solidified American independence and asserted the nation's sovereignty. Madison served as president until March 4, 1817, and died on June 28, 1836. James Monroe Born on April 28, 1758, in Westmoreland County, Virginia, British America. He assumed office on March 4, 1817. A significant event during his presidency was the Monroe Doctrine, declared in 1823. The Monroe Doctrine was a foreign policy statement that asserted the United States' opposition to European interference in the affairs of the Western Hemisphere and warned European powers against establishing new colonies or interfering with existing ones in the Americas. This policy had a profound impact on U.S. foreign relations and became a cornerstone of American diplomacy. Monroe served as president until March 4, 1825, and died on July 4, 1831. Don't forget to smash that like button, share the video with your friends, and hit subscribe to stay tuned for more awesome content. John Quincy Adams Born on July 11, 1767, in Braintree, now Quincy, Massachusetts, British America. He assumed office on March 4, 1825. A significant event during his presidency was the acquisition of Florida from Spain through the Adamsonis Treaty, signed in 1819. This treaty resolved border disputes between the United States and Spain and ceded Florida to the United States in exchange for American renunciation of claims to Texas. Additionally, during his presidency, Adams advocated for internal improvements such as road and canal construction and supported the establishment of national observatories and a national university. He served as president until March 4, 1829, and died on February 23, 1848. Andrew Jackson Born on March 15, 1767, in the Waxhaws region, on the border of North and South Carolina, British America. He assumed office on March 4, 1829. A significant event during his presidency was the Indian Removal Act of 1830. This act authorized the relocation of Native American tribes from their ancestral homelands in the southeastern United States to lands west of the Mississippi River, 
primarily in present-day Oklahoma. The forced removal of Native American tribes, such as the Cherokee, Choctaw, Chickasaw, Creek, and Seminole, became known as the Trail of Tears and resulted in the displacement and suffering of thousands of indigenous people. Jackson's presidency also saw the nullification crisis, in which South Carolina attempted to nullify federal tariffs, leading to a confrontation between state and federal authority. Jackson served as president until March 4, 1837, and died on June 8, 1845. Martin Van Buren. Born on December 5, 1782, in Kinderhook, New York, United States. He assumed office on March 4, 1837. A significant event during his presidency was the economic depression known as the Panic of 1837. This financial crisis was characterized by widespread bank failures, unemployment, and a sharp decline in economic activity. The Panic of 1837 was triggered by a combination of factors, including speculative investments, the collapse of the land bubble, and the withdrawal of foreign investment. Van Buren's response to the economic downturn, including his establishment of the independent treasury system to regulate the nation's finances, remains a notable aspect of his presidency. He served as president until March 4, 1841, and died on July 24, 1862. William Henry Harrison. Born on February 9, 1773, in Charles City County, Virginia, United States. He assumed office on March 4, 1841. A significant event during his presidency was his brief tenure in office, as he served the shortest term of any U.S. president. Harrison's presidency lasted only 31 days, from March 4, 1841, until his death on April 4, 1841. His death was attributed to pneumonia, which he contracted shortly after delivering the longest inaugural address in U.S. history on a cold and wet day without wearing a coat or hat. Despite his brief time in office, Harrison's presidency is remembered for the precedent it set regarding presidential succession and the importance of maintaining the health and well-being of the nation's leaders. John Tyler Born on March 29, 1790, in Charles City County, Virginia, United States. He assumed office on April 4, 1841, following the death of President William Henry Harrison, making him the first vice president to succeed to the presidency due to the death of a sitting president. A significant event during his presidency was the annexation of Texas in 1845. Tyler strongly supported the annexation of Texas, which had declared independence from Mexico in 1836, and worked to secure its admission to the United States as a state. The annexation of Texas was a contentious issue and ultimately led to the outbreak of the Mexican-American War in 1846. Tyler served as president until March 4, 1845. He died on January 18, 1862. James K. Polk. Born on November 2, 1795, in Pineville, North Carolina, United States. He assumed office on March 4, 1845. A significant event during his presidency was the Mexican-American War, which lasted from 1846 to 1848. The war was primarily fought over the annexation of Texas and the dispute over the southern border of Texas, which Mexico claimed as its own. Under Polk's leadership, the United States emerged victorious, resulting in the signing of the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo in 1848. This treaty ceded vast territories, including present-day California, Nevada, Utah, Arizona, New Mexico, Colorado, and Wyoming, to the United States, effectively doubling the size of the country. Polk served as president until March 4, 1849, and died on June 15, 1849. Zachary Taylor. Born on November 24, 1784, in Barbersville, Virginia, United States. He assumed office on March 4, 1849. A significant event during his presidency was the Compromise of 1850, a series of legislative measures aimed at addressing the issue of slavery in the territories acquired from Mexico following the Mexican-American War. The Compromise included provisions such as the admission of California as a free state, the organization of the territories of New Mexico and Utah with the question of slavery to be determined by popular sovereignty, the abolition of the slave trade in Washington, D.C., and the enactment of a stricter fugitive slave law. Taylor's stance against the compromise and his support for the admission of California as a free state contributed to political tensions at the time. Taylor served as president until his death on July 9, 1850. Millard Fillmore. Born on January 7, 1800, in Summerhill, New York, United States. He assumed office on July 9, 1850, following the death of President Zachary Taylor, making him the second vice president to succeed to the presidency due to the death of a sitting president. A significant event during his presidency was the signing of the Compromise of 1850 into law. The Compromise of 1850 was a package of legislative measures aimed at addressing sectional tensions between the northern and southern states over the issue of slavery. 
Fillmore played a key role in facilitating the passage of the Compromise, which included provisions such as the admission of California as a free state, the organization of the territories of New Mexico and Utah with the question of slavery to be determined by popular sovereignty, the abolition of the slave trade in Washington, D.C., and the enactment of a stricter fugitive slave law. Fillmore served as president until March 4, 1853. He died on March 8, 1874. Franklin Pierce. Born on November 23, 1804, in Hillsborough, New Hampshire, United States. He assumed office on March 4, 1853. A significant event during his presidency was the passage of the Kansas-Nebraska Act in 1854. This act, which was introduced by Democratic Senator Stephen A. A. Douglas, repealed the Missouri Compromise of 1820 and allowed for the territories of Kansas and Nebraska to decide the issue of slavery through popular sovereignty. The passage of the Kansas-Nebraska Act intensified the sectional conflict between the northern and southern states and led to violence and bloodshed in the Kansas Territory, earning it the nickname Bleeding Kansas. Pierce's support for the Kansas-Nebraska Act and his handling of the ensuing crisis contributed to his growing unpopularity and eventual defeat in the 1856 presidential election. Pierce served as president until March 4, 1857, and died on October 8, 1869. James Buchanan Born on April 23, 1791, in Cove Gap, Pennsylvania, United States. He assumed office on March 4, 1857. A significant event during his presidency was the growing sectional tensions leading up to the outbreak of the American Civil War. Buchanan faced numerous challenges during his presidency, including the controversy over the expansion of slavery into the Western territories, the Dred Scott v. Sanford Supreme Court decision, and the secession of Southern states following the election of Abraham Lincoln in 1860. Despite his efforts to preserve the Union, Buchanan's administration was marred by indecision and inaction, and he ultimately left office with the nation on the brink of civil war. Buchanan served as president until March 4, 1861, and died on June 1, 1868. Abraham Lincoln Born on February 12, 1809, in Hardin County, Kentucky, United States. He assumed office on March 4, 1861. A significant event during his presidency was the American Civil War, which lasted from 1861 to 1865. The Civil War erupted following the secession of Southern states in response to Lincoln's election as president, with the Confederate States of America being formed in opposition to the Union. Lincoln's primary goal during the war was to preserve the Union and end slavery. He issued the Emancipation Proclamation in 1863, which declared that all enslaved people in Confederate-held territory were to be set free. Lincoln also delivered the Gettysburg Address in 1863, emphasizing the principles of equality and democracy. The Union emerged victorious in 1865, but Lincoln's life was tragically cut short when he was assassinated by John Wilkes Booth on April 14, 1865, just days after General Robert E. Lee's surrender at Appomattox Courthouse. Lincoln's leadership during the Civil War and his commitment to the principles of freedom and equality have solidified his legacy as one of America's greatest presidents. Andrew Johnson Born on December 29, 1808, in Raleigh, North Carolina, United States. He assumed office on April 15, 1865, following the assassination of President Abraham Lincoln, making him the first vice president to succeed to the presidency after the assassination of a sitting president. A significant event during his presidency was the period of Reconstruction following the American Civil War. Johnson's approach to Reconstruction, which favored leniency towards the southern states and opposed granting civil rights to formerly enslaved African Americans, led to clashes with the radical Republicans in Congress. Johnson's clashes with Congress ultimately resulted in his impeachment by the House of Representatives in 1868. He was acquitted by the Senate and remained in office until March 4, 1869. Johnson died on July 31, 1875. Ulysses S. Grant born on April 27, 1822, in Point Pleasant, Ohio, United States. He assumed office on March 4, 1869. A significant event during his presidency was the Reconstruction era following the American Civil War. Grant pursued policies aimed at ensuring civil rights for African Americans and promoting reconciliation between the North and South. He also worked to combat corruption and promote economic development during his presidency. Additionally, Grant's administration oversaw the ratification of the 15th Amendment to the United States Constitution, which granted voting rights to African-American men. After serving two terms as president, Grant retired from politics. He died on July 23, 1885. Rutherford B. Hayes Born on October 4, 1822, in Delaware, Ohio, United States. He assumed office on March 4, 1877. A significant event during his presidency was the end of Reconstruction in the southern states. 
Hay's presidency was marked by efforts to heal the divisions left by the Civil War and to promote civil rights and reconciliation. He pursued policies aimed at protecting the rights of African Americans in the South and fostering economic development and stability. Hayes also played a key role in advocating for civil service reform and government transparency. After serving one term as president, Hayes retired from politics. He died on January 17, 1893. James A. Garfield Born on November 19, 1831, in Orange Township, Ohio, United States. He assumed office on March 4, 1881. A significant event during his presidency was his assassination. Garfield's presidency was tragically cut short when he was shot by Charles J. Guteo on July 2, 1881, just a few months after taking office. Garfield struggled with his injuries for several months before succumbing to infection and complications from the gunshot wound on September 19, 1881. Despite his brief time in office, Garfield's presidency was marked by efforts to combat political corruption and promote civil service reform. He also advocated for civil rights and economic development during his time in office. Garfield's untimely death sparked national mourning and led to calls for increased security measures for future presidents. Chester A. A. Arthur Born on October 5, 1829, in Fairfield, Vermont, United States. He assumed office on September 19, 1881, following the assassination of President James A. Garfield. A significant event during his presidency was his support for civil service reform. Arthur signed the Pendleton Civil Service Reform Act into law in 1883, which established a merit-based system for federal employment and aimed to combat political patronage and corruption. Additionally, Arthur worked to modernize the United States Navy and supported efforts to regulate immigration. He served as president until March 4, 1885. Arthur died on November 18, 1886. Grover Cleveland Born on March 18, 1837, in Caldwell, New Jersey, United States. He assumed office for his first term on March 4, 1885, becoming the 22nd President of the United States. A significant event during his first term was his commitment to fiscal conservatism and government reform. Cleveland vetoed numerous bills that he deemed unconstitutional or wasteful, earning him the nickname Veto President. He also worked to reduce tariffs and advocated for civil service reform. Cleveland served one term before losing re-election to Benjamin Harrison in 1888. However, he ran for president again in 1892 and won, becoming the 24th president of the United States and the only president to serve two non-consecutive terms. A significant event during his second term was the Panic of 1893, a severe economic depression that lasted for several years. Cleveland responded by advocating for lower tariffs and the repeal of the Sherman Silver Purchase Act. He served as president until March 4, 1897. Cleveland died on June 24, 1908. Benjamin Harrison born on August 20, 1833, in North Bend, Ohio, United States. He assumed office on March 4, 1889. A significant event during his presidency was the passage of the McKinley Tariff Act in 1890. This legislation significantly raised tariffs on imported goods, aiming to protect American industries from foreign competition. The McKinley Tariff Act had both positive and negative effects, as it provided protection for American manufacturers but also led to higher consumer prices and strained relations with trading partners. Additionally, Harrison's presidency saw the opening of the first Pan-American Conference in 1889, which aimed to promote cooperation and economic development among the nations of the Western Hemisphere. Harrison served as president until March 4, 1893. He died on March 13, 1901. Grover Cleveland Born on March 18, 1837, in Caldwell, New Jersey, United States. He served two non-consecutive terms as President of the United States. His first term began on March 4, 1885, and ended on March 4, 1889. A significant event during his first term was his commitment to fiscal conservatism and government reform. Cleveland vetoed numerous bills that he deemed unconstitutional or wasteful, earning him the nickname Veto President. He also worked to reduce tariffs and advocated for civil service reform. After losing re-election to Benjamin Harrison in 1888, Cleveland ran for president again and won. His second term began on March 4, 1893, and ended on March 4, 1897. A significant event during his second term was the Panic of 1893, a severe economic depression that lasted for several years. Cleveland responded by advocating for lower tariffs and the repeal of the Sherman Silver Purchase Act. Cleveland's presidency was marked by his dedication to principled governance and his efforts to address economic challenges facing the nation. He died on June 24, 1908, leaving behind a legacy as a champion of limited government and fiscal responsibility. William McKinley 
Born on January 29, 1843, in Niles, Ohio, United States. He assumed office on March 4, 1897. A significant event during his presidency was the Spanish-American War, which took place in 1898. The war was sparked by the explosion of the USS Maine in Havana Harbor and resulted in the United States acquiring territories such as Puerto Rico, Guam, and the Philippines from Spain. McKinley's leadership during the war and the subsequent negotiations for peace treaties solidified his position as a respected commander-in-chief. Another significant event during McKinley's presidency was the passage of the Gold Standard Act in 1900, which established gold as the only standard for redeeming paper money, effectively ending bimetallism in the United States. McKinley was re-elected to a second term in 1900 but tragically assassinated by anarchist Leon Zalgos on September 6, 1901, just six months into his second term. His death marked a somber moment in American history, and he is remembered for his leadership during a period of significant economic and international change. Theodore Roosevelt Born October 27, 1858, in New York City, became the youngest U.S. president at 42 after William McKinley's assassination. His presidency, from 1901 to 1909, marked the Progressive Era. He prioritized conservation, expanding national parks and forests, and trust-busting to regulate big businesses. Internationally, he emphasized diplomacy backed by military strength, mediating the end of the Russo-Japanese War and overseeing the Panama Canal's construction. Though declining re-election in 1908, he ran again in 1912. Roosevelt passed away on January 6, 1919, leaving a lasting legacy as a progressive reformer and dynamic leader. William Howard Taft Born on September 15, 1857, in Cincinnati, Ohio. He assumed office as the 27th President of the United States on March 4, 1909, succeeding Theodore Roosevelt. Taft's presidency was notable for his focus on trust-busting and antitrust legislation, leading to the breakup of several large monopolies. He also implemented reforms in civil service and supported the 16th Amendment, which established the federal income tax. Additionally, Taft initiated policies aimed at promoting peace and stability in international relations, advocating for arbitration treaties and strengthening ties with Latin American countries through what became known as dollar diplomacy. After serving as president, Taft went on to become the Chief Justice of the United States, a position he held from 1921 until his retirement in 1930. He passed away on March 8, 1930, leaving behind a legacy of judicial and political service. Woodrow Wilson Born December 28, 1856, served as the 28th President of the United States from March 4, 1913, to March 4, 1921. His presidency was marked by progressive reforms domestically, including banking regulation and labor reforms, and international involvement, notably leading the United States into World War I. He advocated for the League of Nations but faced challenges, including civil liberties controversies and health issues. Wilson passed away on February 3, 1924. Warren G. Harding Born November 2, 1865, served as the 29th President of the United States from March 4, 1921, until his sudden death on August 2, 1923. His presidency aimed to return the nation to normalcy after World War I, focusing on economic prosperity and international diplomacy. However, his administration was tainted by several scandals, including the Teapot Dome scandal, overshadowing his accomplishments. Calvin Coolidge, nicknamed Silent Cal, served as the 30th President of the United States from August 2, 1923, until March 4, 1929. He earned the moniker Silent Cal due to his reserved and taciturn nature, famously known for his succinct communication style. Legend has it that during a social gathering, a woman boasted she could get him to say more than two words, to which Coolidge dryly replied, you lose. This anecdote captures the essence of his presidency and adds to his enduring legacy. Herbert Hoover Born on August 10, 1874, assumed office as the 31st President of the United States on March 4, 1929. Hoover's presidency was marked by the onset of the Great Depression, which began with the stock market crash of 1929, just months after he took office. Despite his efforts to address the economic crisis through government intervention and public works projects, Hoover faced criticism for his perceived inaction and inability to alleviate the suffering of millions of Americans affected by the Depression. He served as president until March 4, 1933. Franklin D. Roosevelt Born on January 30, 1882, served as the 32nd President of the United States from March 4, 1933, until his death on April 12, 1945. His presidency was defined by his leadership during the Great Depression and World War II, during which he implemented the New Deal and guided the nation through the conflict, respectively. He was elected to an unprecedented four terms in office, leaving a lasting impact on American politics and society. 
Harry S. Truman. Born May 8, 1884, assumed office as the 33rd President of the United States on April 12, 1945, following FDR's death. His presidency saw the end of World War II, including the decision to drop atomic bombs on Japan. Truman also initiated the Marshall Plan and helped establish NATO. Domestically, he pushed for civil rights and social welfare programs. Truman served until January 20, 1953, and died on December 26, 1972. Dwight D. Eisenhower. Born on October 14, 1890, assumed office as the 34th President of the United States on January 20, 1953. His presidency was marked by the Cold War and efforts to contain the spread of communism. Eisenhower's tenure saw the signing of the Korean Armistice Agreement, ending the Korean War, and the implementation of the New Look Policy, which emphasized nuclear deterrence as a means of confronting Soviet aggression. Domestically, Eisenhower presided over a period of economic prosperity and oversaw the construction of the Interstate Highway System, a massive infrastructure project that transformed transportation in the United States. Eisenhower served two terms as president, leaving office on January 20, 1961. He passed away on March 28, 1969, leaving behind a legacy as a respected military leader and statesman. John F. Kennedy Born May 29, 1917, assumed office as the 35th President of the United States on January 20, 1961. His presidency was marked by optimism and ambition, known as the Camelot era. Kennedy navigated the Cuban Missile Crisis and championed the space race. Domestically, he supported civil rights and proposed the New Frontier Agenda. His presidency was tragically cut short by his assassination on November 22, 1963, leaving a lasting impact on the nation. Lyndon B. Johnson. Born August 27, 1908, assumed office as the 36th President of the United States on November 22, 1963, after JFK's assassination. His presidency was marked by landmark civil rights legislation, the Great Society domestic agenda, and escalated involvement in the Vietnam War. Despite domestic achievements, the Vietnam War overshadowed his legacy, and he chose not to seek re-election in 1968. Johnson passed away on January 22, 1973. Richard Nixon. Born January 9, 1913, served as the 37th President of the United States from January 20, 1969, until his resignation on August 9, 1974, amidst the Watergate scandal. Despite foreign policy accomplishments such as normalizing relations with China, his presidency was overshadowed by controversy. Nixon's domestic achievements include establishing the Environmental Protection Agency and implementing desegregation policies. He passed away on April 22, 1994. Gerald Ford. Born July 14, 1913, became the 38th President of the United States on August 9, 1974, following Nixon's resignation. He aimed to heal the nation after Watergate, controversially pardoning Nixon. Ford faced challenges like inflation and energy crises. Remembered for integrity, he passed away on December 26, 2006. Jimmy Carter. Born October 1, 1924, served as the 39th President of the United States from January 20, 1977, to January 20, 1981. His presidency emphasized human rights and diplomacy, with notable achievements including the Camp David Accords and arms control agreements. Domestically, he addressed challenges such as inflation and energy crises. Carter faced criticism for the Iran hostage crisis and lost re-election to Ronald Reagan in 1980. Post-presidency, he remained active in humanitarian work and received the Nobel Peace Prize in 2002. Ronald Reagan. Born February 6, 1911, served as the 40th President of the United States from January 20, 1981, to January 20, 1989. His presidency focused on conservative policies, including tax cuts, deregulation, and a strong stance against the Soviet Union, leading to the end of the Cold War. Reagan's administration faced controversies like the Iran-Contra affair. After leaving office, he remained a prominent figure in American politics until his death on June 5, 2004. George H. W. Bush. Born June 12, 1924, served as the 41st President of the United States from January 20, 1989, to January 20, 1993. His presidency saw the end of the Cold War, marked by the collapse of the Soviet Union, and he led a successful international coalition in the Gulf War to liberate Kuwait from Iraqi forces. Domestically, he signed the Americans with Disabilities Act into law but faced criticism for breaking his Read My Lips, No New Taxes pledge. After his presidency, Bush remained active in public service until his passing on November 30, 2018. Bill Clinton. 
Born August 19, 1946, served as the 42nd President of the United States from January 20, 1993, to January 20, 2001. His presidency was marked by economic prosperity, welfare reform, and peace initiatives in Northern Ireland and the Balkans. However, Clinton faced controversies, including the Monica Lewinsky scandal, leading to his impeachment by the House of Representatives in 1998. Despite this, he left office with high approval ratings and remained active in public service. George W. Bush Born on July 6, 1946, assumed office as the 43rd President of the United States on January 20, 2001. His presidency was marked by significant domestic and international events. Internationally, Bush's presidency was dominated by the aftermath of the September 11, 2001 terrorist attacks. He launched the War on Terror, leading to military interventions in Afghanistan and Iraq. The Iraq War, in particular, became a contentious issue during his presidency. Domestically, Bush implemented tax cuts, education reforms such as the No Child Left Behind Act, and Medicare prescription drug coverage. However, his administration faced criticism for its handling of Hurricane Katrina and the financial crisis of 2008. Despite these challenges, Bush left office in 2009, completing two terms as president. He has since focused on his post-presidential initiatives, including philanthropy and promoting veterans' causes. Barack Obama Born on August 4, 1961, assumed office as the 44th President of the United States on January 20, 2009. His presidency was historic as he became the first African American to hold the office. Obama's presidency was characterized by efforts to address the Great Recession, which began before he took office. He implemented the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act to stimulate economic growth and signed into law the Affordable Care Act, also known as Obamacare, expanding access to health care. Internationally, Obama ordered the operation that resulted in the death of Osama bin Laden, but his foreign policy faced challenges, including the rise of ISIS and ongoing conflicts in the Middle East. Despite facing opposition from Republicans in Congress, Obama pursued progressive policies, including climate change initiatives and immigration reform. He left office in January 2017, completing two terms as president. Since leaving office, Obama has remained active in public life, advocating for Democratic candidates and promoting civic engagement through his foundation, the Obama Foundation. Donald Trump Born on June 14, 1946, assumed office as the 45th President of the United States on January 20, 2017. His presidency was marked by a focus on economic nationalism, immigration reform, and America First policies. Domestically, Trump implemented tax cuts, rolled back regulations, and appointed conservative judges to the federal judiciary. He also sought to repeal and replace the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, but faced challenges in Congress. Internationally, Trump pursued an America First foreign policy agenda, renegotiating trade deals such as NAFTA and implementing tariffs on imports from China. He also sought to strengthen border security and reduce illegal immigration, advocating for the construction of a border wall between the United States and Mexico. Trump's presidency was characterized by controversy, including ongoing investigations into Russian interference in the 2016 election and his impeachment by the House of Representatives in 2019, though he was acquitted by the Senate. Trump left office on January 20, 2021, after losing the 2020 presidential election to Joe Biden. Since leaving office, he has remained active in politics, advocating for his policy agenda and endorsing candidates in Republican primaries. Joe Biden Born on November 20, 1942, assumed office as the 46th President of the United States on January 20, 2021. His presidency began amid a global pandemic and a deeply divided nation. Biden's administration has focused on addressing the COVID-19 pandemic, implementing a national vaccination program and providing economic relief to individuals and businesses affected by the pandemic. Domestically, Biden has pursued an ambitious agenda, including proposals for infrastructure investment, climate change mitigation, and healthcare reform. He has also prioritized issues such as racial justice, immigration reform, and voting rights. Internationally, Biden has worked to rebuild relationships with traditional allies and re-engage with multilateral organizations such as the World Health Organization and the Paris Climate Agreement. He has also taken a tough stance on adversaries such as Russia and China, while seeking to de-escalate tensions in regions such as the Middle East. Biden's presidency continues to face challenges, including political polarization, economic uncertainty, and ongoing threats to democracy. However, he has pledged to work tirelessly to address these challenges and build a more inclusive and prosperous future for all Americans. We're glad you've learned about the American presidents. Join us in the next video for more fascinating insights and discussions. Until then, take care and see you soon.